So you want to communicate well in English, you've got to get your verbs right. That's basic. Let's listen to a video clip and I want you to listen to my student Fernando and try to listen for the verbs that he uses and I'm going to give some feedback on his verbs. So here we go. Uh, today I'm going to talk about my older brother. For me, he's the best person. Uh, he always helped me about the, for example, when I decided to come to Australia for study English, he helped me I choose which country I, 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 could, I could study English. All right, um, so this is what he said. So the first thing he said for, was, for me, he's talking about his brother here. He said, for me is the best person. Okay, what he's done here is number one cardinal sin of grammar is he's missed the subject out. So instead of saying for me is the best person, he needs to say for me he is the best person. He's got to add his subject. Okay, the second rule is he's got to agree his subject and verb. So um, he says he always help me. Okay, when you use he, she and it, you have to say helps. Okay, that's called second person. We'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. But we have to say he helps me. Okay, and the third rule is he needs to use ed in the past, past tense. So for past simple, um, you can say, uh, so he says, um, for example, when I decide to come to Australia, he helped me. Okay, what he needs to say here is, when I decided to come to Australia, he helped me. Decided, so if the word ends in a D, we say did. And if, it's, if it ends in P, like help, we have to say helped with a T sound. Okay, and those, both of those mean ED. So in past tense, we need to use ED. We're going to talk so English is very time oriented. We want to know when this action happened. Did it happen in the past? Did it happen in the present? Is it happening now? Is it going to happen in the future? Will it happen tonight? Okay, so we need to know all of this time information and we use time phrases and we also have to think carefully about our verbs and teach ourselves how to speak using the correct verbs. So first things first, what exactly is a verb? Okay, um, every English sentence has two main things and a lot of other things as well, but two main things. You have to have a subject and a verb. So if I say to you, the Queen lives in England. All right, so the subject of my sentence, the focus of my sentence is what? The Queen. Okay, then I have to ask, what does she do? She lives. So the Queen is the subject and lives is the verb. All right, so we have to focus on the verb because the verb is where we change our rules. Okay, but we need to have the subject there and the verb there. For things that are always true about you, we will use present simple because it's always true. It's your habit. Okay, so you might say, um, I go to the beach every Saturday. So that's your habit. It's always true. We also use it, for example, about what time the movie starts. The movie starts at 7 because the movie always starts at 7 at that cinema. Okay, the train arrives at 6 p.m. Okay, because it always arrives at 6, 6 p.m. So this is how we use present simple, things that are always true. Let's talk a bit about past simple. All right, so past simple uh, is talking about things, typically about things that happened in chronological order. Okay, so we often use past simple about uh, something that have things that happen in history. But you might talk about your morning routine using past simple. You might say this morning, so you'll use a past tense 
phrase. This morning I got up early. I made a coffee. I drank the coffee on the balcony. Okay, got, drank, uh, dr got, made and drank. Okay, so those are the past tense form is I get, I drink, I make. That's present tense. Past tense is got, drank, made and drank. Got, made and drank. Okay, so we actually changed the whole form of the verb and this kind of verb is called an irregular verb. So with irregular verbs, we don't add ed, we change the whole verb. Drink becomes drank, get becomes got, wake becomes woke, okay, eat becomes ate. If you would like a list of irregular verbs, I'm going to put one in the comments below and you can go and go there and begin to learn your irregular verbs. All the other verbs take ed in the past tense. So just like our first example, I decided, okay, or Fernando said he, uh, when I decided to come to Australia, he helped me. I decided, he helped. Okay, let's talk a little bit now about future tense. Okay, future simple is pretty easy. All right, all we need to do is add will to the simple form of the verb. So you might say, right now I am living in Sydney, but next from now on I will live in Canberra. All right, so you can, uh, you can just say will live. Will live is future simple, and that's pretty easy. Okay, and we use, don't forget to use your future time phrases with future simple. Tonight I'll call you. I'll call you tonight. I will call you tonight. Or we say I'll call. Typically in conversation we use I'll. I'll call you tonight. Okay, that's basically all I have to say about verb tenses. And, and today we were talking about the simple tenses. But in the future I'm going to talk to you about continuous and progressive verb types and I'm also going to talk, you, talk to you about perfect verb types and those are the three. So here's a quick summary. Subject and verb are the most important parts of the sentence and we have to agree our subject with our verb in present simple. There are three verb tenses, past, present and future. And there are three verb types as well, simple, continuous or progressive and perfect. Simple verbs often talk about things that happen in chronological order or in order that they happen one after the other. I got up, I made a coffee, I ate my breakfast on the balcony. When you are speaking in present simple you have to add an S to your verb if you're using second person. Second person is he, she and it. Okay, my father, that's he. My father always gets up early. Gets, not get, gets. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's little grammar bite. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and all those good things. And make sure you come back next time for our next class.